Hi guys, this is Jason here from Nathaniel. Welcome to part 5 of this series on 16th note hand independence. And in this lesson, yeah, we are going to continue our study on 16th note playing in general, but it's going to be slightly different than the first four videos. Uh, if you haven't already, do head over and check those out. If not, you could even actually follow from this video because these are all independent exercises. None of them have related to each other and it's not in a order as such so if you've stumbled on this one you are in part five but there are other parts as well there's a playlist in the description head over there and do watch the other parts which give you different perspectives to interact your two hands and develop hand independence which is such an important thing which pianists yearn for so continuing our study on 16th note hand independence in this particular part or in this exercise there's one thing which i have not added that is the pulse okay in all the other videos or all the, all the other exercises the left hand was doing the pulse playing some kind of a chord um, the right hand or else the right hand was playing the chord you know uh, as the pulse so one hand was doing the pulse while the other hand was holding the groove or the pattern which is on the 16th note division either as a bass line or a chord sequence or an arpeggio or whatever it was so there are a lot of options available in this series which i think can really grow your rhythm piano playing okay so in this lesson I've adopted a, a technique which I call a syncopation uh, syncopation is basically where you're gonna attack all the 16th notes of the bar now just a quick introduction to what's going on there 16th notes means you're gonna divide the beat into four equal units and say 1e e and a 2e e and a 3e e and a 4e e and a, which is like a globally accepted thing it just makes it easy to count without being like a tongue twister or something you know and it, everyone follows it now around the earth so 1e e and a 2e e and a 3e e and a 4e e and a shows us that every beat is getting divided into four units 1e e and a 2e e and a now what's going to happen is you're going to play every single one of those beats but you're going to divide or distribute those beats into both your hands and it's going to end up sounding like this you see i'm playing all the divisions 1e e and a 2e e and a 1e e and a 2e e and a right and a 2e e and a 3e e and a 4e e and a 1e so I have not really left out any gaps unlike the last lessons where there were gaps and you had to maintain a pulse which is just the 1, 2, 3, 4 of the bar. So here we adopt this thing called syncopation which is what you will find a lot of drummers use and more particularly percussion players like you know bongo players, djembe, darbuka and tabla players for sure. So the left hand is going to hit the bass drum while the right hand is going to hit the higher drum which has a higher pitch. I try to simulate that on the body by going here for low or my left hand and right hand goes high and plays on the thigh which gives you like a nice sharp snare like quality so if I do the same pattern which I did on the keyboard it's gonna be a very percussive pattern even if I do it on the body you will it's almost as though I'm drumming something like this Right? Right? So if you observe, I'm not doing all the hits in one hand. I'm not going, I can't even do that. It's impossible. So I have to divide and distribute the, the beats as per the pitches. So what happens is it's sort of like a, a conversation which is happening between your low register or your left hand and the high register or the right hand they are literally having a chat with each other you know or a conversation so that's how you need to visualize your two hands you could also visualize it as pattern by pattern or oh, this hand is doing that pattern that hand is doing that pattern but yeah there are many ways to visualize it so i guess as long as you get the job done well and good now syncopation as i said earlier at least what i'm imagining as syncopation in this lesson is where the two hands are playing every single beat but distributing it in certain ways not evenly you don't want to do 
it's very predictable and rather annoying if you ask me so it's not evenly distributed and that's what makes it groovy so one hand the left hand at some instances will take up some of the off beats while the right hand in some instances will take up the off beats and then some ha- one hand will go on while the other hand will go off so they really complement each other well and 16th notes essentially means you have four subdivisions in a beat so that will be 16 divisions in a bar of 4 and i have composed this exercise on a bar of 4 basically 4 four beats per bar so let's now get to it um let's first look at the chords independent of the rhythm arrangement and then we'll bring in the rhythm so the chords are basically a very simple 6 4 1 5 chord progression which you'll find in a lot of songs i have chosen e flat major for my scale so 6 of e flat let's first look at e flat major again right so that's your e flat major three flats and now you try to find the 6 that's c C minor then you go to the 4 A flat major then you go 1 which is E flat major and then you go 5 which is B flat major okay and this is how i'm playing the chords in my right hand chords are in the right in this exercise and the bass notes are played in the left hand so i'm just playing the roots of each chord C for C minor A flat for A flat major, E flat for E flat major, B flat for B flat major. Okay, and then the right hand will play our chords. First chord C minor played as G C E flat. I'm using this inversion, just like this area of playing it. And now A flat major, you can play like this, but the shape I'm using. is this suspended shape so c minor i'm playing b c e flat b c e flat so it creates like an a flat suspended or a a flat add add to because the 3 is also there right so i'm knocking off that a flat and going to b flat it's just a colorful way of playing that uh, a flat major chord which is the 4 so you go c minor a flat add 2 and e flat is right here g b flat e flat is how i'm playing it c minor a flat add 2 e flat played as g b flat e flat and then lastly F B flat D using the correct inversions. So I'm actually using chord inversions to make it easy to shift and great on the ear. E flat, B flat, and for B flat I'm coloring it up by adding a fourth note, E flat, which is anyway the root of the scale, so it'll sound good on anything. So. also nice while playing these uh, flurry runs so so i just keep that e flat there if you want or you can remove it it's optional so chords a flat e flat b flat with the added e flat if you wish and each chord is basically played for two counts so 1 2 change 4 So at the three, you are going to change the chords. It's like a quick chord change. C minor, A flat, E flat major, B flat. Let's keep that going. A flat, E flat, B flat. Okay. And at the end of the bar, instead of just playing B flat, I could also play this chord, which adds to the you know the resolution or creates a nicer loop. You know, by playing a, a nice dominant chord at the end. Let me play that for you. C, A flat major, E flat, B flat. What's that chord right there? It's basically B flat diminished seventh. In your right hand, you want to go A flat, B, D, F with a B bass to give you that diminished seventh. 
chord there which takes itself back to the root c minor ta da 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 so it really that diminished seventh chord is a very tense chord beautiful at the same time but it's an unstable quality so it's great to add that at the end of the bar so then it immediately uh, you know sort of locks magnetically to the first chord of the chord progression in this case c minor so c minor a flat e flat b flat you can stay there or c minor a flat e flat b flat b diminished c so those are your chords e flat b flat c minor a flat add two e flat b flat b diminished seventh and back to c okay just keep in mind before we get into the rhythm patterns of both hands and then interact them together the left hand basically you need to play it as octaves don't just play a single c because in the very near future we are going to kind of distribute our left hand as well not to just play the notes together but also to do a rhythm pattern between the root and the octave right so figure out a way to play both of them together it's quite easy pinky on the root and the thumb on the octave and also keep your index finger or the middle finger whichever is easier to play the fifth of each chord so for c minor the fifth is g for a flat major the fifth is e flat you don't want to play them together it'll sound very muddy so we're going to play them like a bass player in a group pom 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 like that okay c minor a flat major e flat keep your fifth finger ready in this case the index finger waiting on b flat and then b flat what is b flat's fifth it's f it's a little tricky to find that but it's f theoretically okay and back okay so this is basically what your hands are going to be holding now coming to what your hands will be doing rhythmically okay i'll play you the rhythm pattern again very quickly just to refresh your memory and then we'll try and slowly but surely break it down so stick with us stick with me till the end you will definitely get this okay and remember we are in the 16th note domain so we're dividing the beat into four units so i'll play it same voicings which i taught you late earlier c minor g c e flat a flat e flat g b flat e flat b flat major f b flat d there okay now what am i doing let's break this down the first thing i would advise you to do before you get to a stage like maybe this like a so before you get to that confident stage just keep your left hand only on the ones and the threes because the chord hit points are at the one and the three so you go 1 3 1e and a 2e and a 3 and a 4e and a 1e and a 2e right and a 4e and a one. just the roots of the chord played as octaves just start with that okay and keep the count going for e remember each chord is changing every two beats one e and a two e and a three okay and a three and a four okay now coming to the right hand the right hand basically attacks at the e and the and of beat 1 one. one e and a two e and a that's all you need to remember because i've sort of repeated that for beat Three e and er and four, so e and two er, uh, e and two er, uh, so e and two er, uh, e and two e and er, uh, e and two e and er, uh, e and two e and er. Uh. You repeat the phrase even for the three e and four e and. E and four e and e and four e and so one e and two e and a e and two and a e and two e and a three e. I forget the three sometimes, but you get the idea. One e and two e and a three e and four e and a. So that's your right hand. Let's slow it down. E and two e and 
a e and for e and a e and to e and a the and for e and a to e so as you can see i'm itching to do something more in the left hand that's coming up very shortly for now you can just hold the roots as uh, minims or two beat values get this going you can do that as well if you'd like to play that b diminished seventh chord so normal b flat at the end now going to do the diminished e and a to e and a e and a for e and a so i'm just hitting at e and e and back so coming to the finishing piece of this puzzle the left hand right so instead of just going the roots and octaves played together as a sort of a pulse we do this sort of a rhythm pattern which i'll break down for you right now money this is the groove one e and a two e and one e and a two e and so root octave octave fifth it's a four note phrase every two beats so c c c g so these are the base notes of c minor so if i play c minor here a great way to start i guess is just hold the c minor chord in the right hand don't groove or don't play that pattern i showed you earlier just hold it so Okay. Get the C minor nice and tight. One E and a two E and a. Now, let's go through the chord changes. C minor, A flat. What happened there? same thing right root octave and it's fifth so root octave fifth root oct oct fifth root oct oct fifth root. then left hand a nice way to make it more epic is just hold down the pedal for every chord of course make sure to lift it before the next chord otherwise things will get really crazy so pedal on e flat b flat e flat a flat e flat b flat and now slowly see if you can get the pulse in the right hand puts everything into perspective right one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e basically every pulse or quarter note and now getting to the syncopated phrase as i told you in this lesson there's no pulse needed well you could do the pulse i just showed you you can also play the chords as the pulse remember the right hand pattern discussed earlier so you want to do that now with the left hand which now for some strange reason you'll find that it may actually become a lot easier it's like your two hands are talking to each other and it it just somehow works so a, a great way to get this somehow is to get maybe the left hand first which is going dum pum pa bum pum pa pa bum or maybe get the right hand first which is going ta 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 get internalize what both of those rhythms separately and start with one of them maybe now i'm starting with the left hand see if you can imagine the right hand rhythm pa 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 and slowly but surely bring that in
right hand with the left hand bass left hand pattern right only left hand fill in that diminished chord as well perhaps so maybe the second bar or the second cycle you could add that diminished seventh chord so first cycle you just do c minor a flat e flat b flat second cycle you do c minor a flat e flat b flat and then add the diminished and then it creates a very interesting loop of chords right right guys so let's just revise the exercise once more we've looked at 16th note independence this is part number 5 we've looked at syncopation where the important things to keep in mind are the left hand and the right hand will interact with each other by playing basically all the divisions of a bar of 4 where you're dividing by the beat into four units and uh, you develop a pattern in both hands which is sort of not even you don't want to do left right left right left right left right you want to kind of do something different in each hand so that the accents and the off beats shine randomly it's like the two hands are talking to each other right so the left hand had a pattern the right hand had a pattern and then we put them together <coughs> right so before i sign off i'm going to play the lesson really slow for you to play along with me i hope and if you have it already don't forget to subscribe to our channel turn on the bell for notifications leave us a comment that'll be fun give us a like share the video bring more people on board and you could also consider being our patron on patreon where you're going to get all the handwritten notes from the exercises i do now in the past and of course in the future it's all going to be there on patreon as neat pdf files so head over there and it'll also be a great support to our channel and here's me signing off with the super slow version of the exercise